palpable discrimination, social and economic depredation and an iron-fisted administration operating at the behest of Islamabad to suppress the people essentially describe the fundamental story of Gilgit Baltistan, a territory that has remained under Pakistan's illegal occupation for more than seven decades. The region that has little representation in the constitutional framework of Pakistan has not only been denied the basic rights and shares, but has been plundered ruthlessly by an exploitative coalition of army generals and politicians. The only thing that matters to Islamabad from this region is money and natural resources. It imposes severe taxation laws in the region in order to raise the amount of exchequer and exploits resources to meet its energy needs. Rest is just an infertile piece of land which is extensively used by inter-services intelligence to engineer and carry out its drills of terror activities against India. People who have tried to raise a voice against these illegal installations have met the fate of death. There's hundreds and hundreds of people on the street demanding self-rule and end to Pakistan's colonial rule in Gilgit Baltistan and end to China's encroachment on our land and resources. And because of Pakistan's um, um, relationship with uh, the militant organizations, and its uh, illegal involvement in Afghanistan. Uh, Gilgit Baltistan became the hotbed for militancy during the Afghan Jihad, and it's been going on and continued like that since then. And unfortunately, that has, as a consequence, resulted in massacre of the local people there. Locals have repeatedly and vehemently opposed economic and political ambitions of Pakistani oligarchs who have been ruthless in snatching locals' land and resources by harming regions, ecology and environment. Anyone opposing meets the deadly consequences. Thomas Garrett Jr., a United States congressman who has been critical of the government of Pakistan for exercising high-handedness reiterates his position on severe human rights violations. If you look at the Constitution and you compare it to how the actual government is functioning, if you look at where the reins of power are, if you look at uh, some, some abilities of the ISI in particular to affect uh, what, what some might call control, I think that's beyond what was contemplated. Um, so I, what I want to be clear about is, again, there's no single community of human beings in Pakistan who I'm being critical of. It is the leadership of the nation that denies individuals the rights that they are entitled to, not again by a constitution or by law, but by nature. Pakistan, the factory of terrorism, has been seeking international sympathy on global platforms, calling itself a victim of terror and taking large amounts of money from developed countries like the United States and other European Union. It uses the same money to embolden its cold-blooded generals and brutal ISI officials to further suppress the people of the region. A high-scale and systematic program is launched against the dissenting voices of the region. I voted against funding for Pakistan because I thought they are not acting the way that we would in America. Number one, and you don't take American money and oppress your people with our money. That's not what we stand for. Pakistan stands on the cusp of being declared a pariah state after it was put in grey list by the Financial Action Task Force for its active involvement in the funding of the terror activities. There is a growing anger in the people of Gilgit Baltistan and they demand an immediate action against the nurturing factory of terrorism.